Education, data, equity. Reluctant project manager. Gamer, nurse, developer. Job interview today. Just a little background on me. I'm a Chicago native. Um, I Laura was like, "What's what are you about?" I'm like, "I'm about cities." So I'm all about cities. Kind of a cheating thing because cities are everything. But when I was 10 years old, I was like hyper obsessed with the fact that Chicago had ripped down the 1893 World's Fair, and I was really mad at Chicago. And I would sit at the Museum of Science and Industry and like glare at the lagoon. But it was made of paper mache and it burned down, so I'm fine. But because of that, I decided I wanted to be an urban planner, and that's why I said citizen experience design, because as I've gone through my work, I've realized a lot of the work you do in civic and civic tech has nothing to do with building a giant bridge or like a new city. Like there's already a city, it's Chicago. So I'm we're just tweaking everything for user experience reasons. And so um, when I say so, I was like trying to understand what I did with my life. And then I was offered this opportunity in gender equity and tech, and I realized if I like cities, cities as a system, so my cop-out is I work on systems, which is a city. So I'm, just, I'm linking it there. So uh, I was in urban planning. I loved the, I love cities. And then I got this call one day that Melinda Gates was looking for a city for this new program, Gender Equity and Tech. And I was like, well, it was like going to be Denver, Austin, or Chicago. And I was like, that's ridiculous. Chicago is the best place for this. So I just like sent, you know, those emails with like the little brackets, like this person meet this person. I did that like 10 times and they're like, we chose Chicago. Would you like to switch from urban planning to running a gender equity and tech office? And I was like, sure, I'll try that. So um, I took this into opportunity five years ago and jumped into this space. And so um, about five years ago, I stepped into a role. They were like, but it's also 2020. So I got hired March 6th, and then they were like, you're going to do all these events, you're going to rally all these people, these tech events, and then it was like COVID. Um, so I actually spent f a full year in this program, fully virtual. I'm sure we, I think Derek Eater and I were on Shy Hack Night virtual then too. Um, and so I think, fast forward, I'm now at World Business Chicago, ostensibly running the continuation of a five-year program called Get Cities, Gender Equity and Tech. And it's now the gender equity office at WBC. I made the title up, so we'll pending. Um, all right, so first of all, I wanted to, um, so what happens is I ran a five-year program called Get Cities. And at the end of the five years, my funders said, we really like what you're doing, but I don't know if we want to do it all independent. Would you look for an organization where you could find a home? And so uh, about I'm about eight weeks old at World Business Chicago, um, and I was able to say, I'd like to continue this gender equity work um, at this economic development group called World Business Chicago. So it, what it is, is it's the business development um, arm of Mayor Brandon Johnson's administration, or the mayor's administration. Um, it's a nonprofit that works with private businesses, but also the government, and there's 100 board members from different um, corporations in Chicago. I'd also like to step back and talk about gender equity in tech. I think it's a really important time for this um, to see how much we've evolved. When at 2020, when I interviewed for a role, it was a role and they were like, we're gonna work on women in tech. And then it was gender equity in tech. And I think it's in a very important time in this space because I think a lot is changing about the sensibilities. Um, and I'm really happy to be a voice. I go to a lot of things where like, let's have a women's round table. I'm like, or not, we could not, you know, we could do something a little different. And so I think it's a, a really good time to be, um, covering this conversation, especially in Chicago tech. So just put a slide about what WBC, so we work with data and research. I think the big one that's important is workforce and talent. Um, and then we do a lot of work in the tech ecosystem. I was able to talk to Cameron. We offer this program called Think Chicago, which helps students think about tech roles in Chicago, connect everyone to the ecosystem. And so I, ha I had this question recently, like, why gender equity in tech? Um, so. Depressingly, we are 100 years away from gender currently. Like, we can all burn some stuff down and we'll be closer. But right now, we're 100 years away from gender parity. Um, and so, this is, we, I have a women's stat here only because the trans and non-binary statistics are abysmal. So, if you want to have a conversation with me about how we unleash further data on trans and non-binary participation in the tech workforce, that would be great. 
but um, in our in the work we, that the Melinda Gates Foundation did on this, 26% of representation is women. About 1% known and growing is trans and non-binary um, in the tech workforce. Uh, that's depressing. Um, it actually was higher in the 80s, conversation for later. So um, we have gotten worse. Um, and so, and then Chicago was also a city. So what I did is I work in workforce, but also in founders. Um, we're really excited about starting women um, and non-binary tech companies but 2.1% um, of venture capital is given to those companies. Um, so as I mentioned, I am kind of a little merger. So I started as Get Cities, and so the goals were to increase percentage of women trans and non-binary. Um, very specifically, Melinda Gates, if you've seen her background, is a computer science graduate. Um, so it was, this is a complicated one, also happy to dialogue. Thank you, actually CompTIA for your data. Um, this is a very complicated one because tech companies have non-tech workers and non-tech companies have tech workers. So this was fun to try to un, un, um, take out. And then increasing the percentage of um, individuals in the tech workforce, also complicated. Hiring, people can talk about hiring all you want. People have no idea who's staying. You go to a tech company and they're like, it's awesome, we hired 100 people. I'm like, who stayed? And they're like, I don't know. Who got promoted? I have no idea. And that's really scary because I really think we have a revolving door issue there. And then the percentage of however we feel about venture capital increased the amount of venture capital to tech um, companies. And so what I did, what have I done in the last five years? Um, so we, we were more of a, I call myself like an org to organization. So the biggest thing is you probably didn't meet me where I was hiring a tech workforce or I wasn't, I would, the amount of people that asked me for a venture capital check I could not give them was very depressing. But what we did is we ran programs, um, very similar to Shy Hack Night actually, looked for a small uh, bug or intervention, piloted that intervention with little funding and then grew it um, with the support of the Melinda French Gates Foundation. Um, some of the things I'm really proud of, uh, we incubated, um, one of our members really wanted a venture fellow program. So how do people that are not in venture capital learn how to be in venture capital? And so we've actually funded 37 fellows who have learned about being in venture capital. They come from computer science backgrounds, they come from um, finance backgrounds, they come from different universities. Um, so that's been, that's continuing with a partner called Chicago Blend. Uh, the other, so another thing that um, my work was, was finding tiny, things that nobody was working on, but probably someone should be working on. So I just mentioned Chicago's pretty good at starting women or non-binary tech companies. They're not great at growing them. If you want PitchBook or Crunchbase, which are like founder databases, the amount of women or non-binary that have raised over $100,000 of capital is sub 1,000 people in history in data. I'm not saying that there, there's probably more, but if you go on the database for Chicago, in history, less than 1,000 people with those identities have raised over $100,000 in capital, so which is kind of sad as well. And so one thing I said is, let's think about that. So what we did is we took 20 women in non-binary that had raised over $100,000 in capital and said, why don't you come here, I will pay you to give honest truths to everyone in Chicago, 1871s and P33s, and like what are we doing and what are we not doing? And so that's something where we have hyper-focused on once you're past that first stage, like once all of you have started your companies, how do we keep going? How do we make you all the money that and grow the jobs and you can hire the people you want? Um, another one that we worked on was something called TechRise. It's a program at P33, which is another partner org. I will throw out a lot of names, I'm very sorry. But the idea of giving grants to diverse founders as they get started, and not equity, just like here's some money, I take no equity in your company to give people a leg up. And so we were able to help deploy $2 million in capital to those founders, and they have raised 50 million of follow-on funding, and those are all diverse background founders. So where we are now, so that was my past work with Get Cities, and so we reached a five-year grant and my funder said, we want you to continue this work, but we want you to expand it. I also wanna say that I am I have a background of urban planning and engagement, so um, I'm on LinkedIn, I'll, I can share my contact info. If you have ideas, I am here to broaden this narrative 
from tech. So all of your help, I would love. So what does that mean? There'll be direct gender equity programs um, that I've already worked on and will continue. But then World Business Chicago is a big platform. They help with life science and they help with finance. And there are, I mean, it's depressing, but like if there was a tech equity issue, it's like, it's not like going over to real estate or finance and it's a shining picture either. So there's a lot of efforts to, I'm sorry, I'm like a little rain cloud on this, um, but how do we weave it into like the larger economy? Um, and then we also have this 100 member corporate board and all of our stakeholders. So, hey, we're gonna work with World Business Chicago programs, but then I'd also welcome the ideas everyone has around um, diverse hires and increasing diverse startups. Um, the biggest thing that I really draw from, and I wanna just draw a parallel to Shy Hack Night, um, I did, I have wandered through my jobs. So I'm saying, oh, I'm in urban planning, and then I was in tech, and it totally makes sense. No. I was in my 20s and I worked for the coolest next person. So I worked for the ex-CTO of Chicago and the ex-CIO of Chicago. And now I pretend like it was strategic and it was just really nice people that I like to work for. But thank God I went from the mayor's office and then I ran, and I can't even explain this, I then ran a tech team at an architecture firm designing 3D buildings in China. The pro is it made me realize how similar it is to user experience in all fields. Urban planning is just user experience, except there's a grandma who's yelling at me because the sidewalk is cracked and I need to fix it. And people are yelling at you because there's a bug in their system and you need to fix it. So it's mostly fix things. So what we have here is I created this journey map at Get Cities, um, and it's really how we do our work. So from academia all the way to a board position, for women and non-binary in the workforce, how do I get every single, if I'm telling someone they're gonna have a tech job when they're in a kindergartner, like do they end up being a CEO? Because if not, we're failing them. We are just lying over here. If we are telling someone to start a company, do they get the money and are they a CEO? Because if not, we are also not doing them justice. So a lot of what I'll do is I will spend a lot of hyper-focused time People are like, oh, do you do this, the work on the K through 12 STEM? I'm like, no. K through 12 STEM is oversubscribed and overfunded at this point for me to start a new program. No shade to K through 12 STEM. I just think there's a lot of funding and effort there. However, what the heck do we do in the years one through five? Like, why am I telling this girl to major in robotics? Because there's no, ro sorry, I'm just, so there's, I feel like there's some vibing going on here, but, yeah, yeah. but oh. isolate, isolate a gap and point it out. So right now, biggest gap I see, this is where I'm most passionate. Years one through five, pre-management, 85% of uh, first-line managers are white men, so that's a problem because where are the promotions? So again, hyper-focus on this issue. Here we said, great, you got the first check, you learned how to pitch on a stage for $25,000. Meanwhile, the dude is getting a million dollars at the golf course. So maybe less stage, more golf course. Maybe not golf course, but like fancy party and FOMO. So it's, it's really about... I'm very passionate, I think similar to everyone here, you guys could solve infinite problems with your skills, but that's a lot. So what we do, what I wanna do with my work is, what are those isolated points no one is spending time on, or 10 groups are spending like a B minus effort on and we could do a little bit better. So that's what I'm really passionate about, is how do we take like what you work on, like the way you're thinking about functionalities, I'm just taking that in policy and change and trying to hyper focus on something. And what's nice about my work is every year with Get Cities or this gender equity office, I'll just re-roll the dice. Like, okay, we're gonna work on FinTech startup founders of this age. Great, remix it. And I think that's hopefully the role I can play and talk to everyone here about like, what are you feeling? How can we team up? I'm not gonna be able to do everything, but I'm here to just like place allies along this journey map. Okay, the other thing I did was my funders were like, okay, I want you to hire 20,000 more women in non-binary, and I want you to double the amount of venture capital given to women in non-binary in five years with two employees. And I was like, are you kidding me? That's hard. And so the other thing I did was recognize that a lot of my work, I'm gonna call it organization, organization, a lot of my work is in like a transformers model. I am not doing this by myself, that is insane. What I did was I noticed there was a lot of different people doing things. So this is the workforce groups, right? Like, have, raise your hand. Have you, has anyone been to any of these organizations out in tech? Like, exactly. Okay. So eight of them have a hiring fair. Six of them have an apprenticeship program. Four of them have mentorship, right? There's a lot of energy going into this work. So what we did at Get Cities and continue at WBC was maybe the strongest thing I can offer is just like a council 
very similar to Hack Night, I buy empanadas. We sit in a room and I'm like, let's have an honest conversation. How is that hiring fair going? Maybe we should have one. I still have yet to solve how we're gonna have one hiring fair, but this is the stuff I work on with these councils. So the other thing is, if I'm missing groups, I'm, you know, maybe we should have now, we should talk. But these groups meet and I honestly feel like their comparing notes is almost the healing starting point the communities, you know, thinking about Think Chicago. Does the Think Chicago then know you can join Latinas in tech? And you can also be, have crazy good times at National Society of Black Engineers. And a lot of these groups were not together. So a lot of the work is just buying a lot of pizza for a lot of different nonprofit leaders. And the other complication is I need that because this is the crazy thing we're in in Chicago. This is very hard to explain. So when I go to a company and I'm like, I would like you to do a, help me with tech jobs, they're like, I don't even know where to start. If you go to the Bay Area, I think everyone knows, I think actually anyone would say they're in a tech job. You could be like handing out the mail, you're like a tech worker. Chicago is the opposite. Chicago, you are in finance and then you're a tech worker. You might be an actual pure tech worker, fine. You work at a startup or meta, I will hand you that. But most tech jobs are actually a non-tech industries. And so that's something to think about. Like when you're trying to unleash the tech talent of Chicago, Northwestern Hospital, J.P. Morgan Chase, that is where all the talent is. And everyone is like, I don't know where the talent is. It is hidden in weird job pathway codes, data sheets, nobody has any idea. I, like, I, I asked one friend of mine at a corporation for help to find the tech team, ERG. So the Employee Resource Group for the Tech Group. It took him like five weeks because it wasn't like clear cut. So the biggest thing I think is learning from everyone here. How are you finding tech community? Where are you going? A lot of what I do with the work that I'm, that I'm teeing up for workforce, I probably am not going to physically convince every company to hire. First of all, ethically, I'm not even sure where to put people at this moment. So the first idea was like corporate pledge, get everyone into tech roles. I have a lot of feelings about that. I would tell a company, oh, they're like, oh, I can help. And then I would talk to people in the company and they weren't having the best time. So what I said is, you know what, let's change the narrative. Let's go back to that community. If I can get everyone who is a tech worker at a company to a community, whether it's this, whether it's the product meetup, whether it's the UX meetup, and then there's a grander citywide tech community, I think about CompTIA, other groups, I really do feel like mobilization of the workforce together. I think there's enough natural recommendations. Hey, that's not a great place to work. Hey, maybe have you tried this? Hey, I'm looking for a product job. There's something about this where if you can unite enough workers and then you can also get them enough mentors and then you can finally get them, the, we have to run like a unified game. And the problem with tech in Chicago is it's not clear where it is. I would like to thank CompTIA for their job codes because it is also, as cybersecurity blows up, as AI blows up, the federal government's job codes, back to data, do not reflect the jobs we have. So you can't even, you literally cannot track cybersecurity jobs at BLS right now. It is really rough. And so that's why as jobs evolve, it becomes part of this like grassroots movement to reflect the tech work. So I just wanted to kind of end with, um, I don't even know how I'm doing on time, I just got excited. So the biggest thing, if you're interested, uh, what I did is I'm, I'm, I'm iterating, this is version four of something called Exploration Day. Think of it as an activity fair on steroids. Tech Nexus gives me their entire floor one Saturday. Um, if anyone is interested, and you can try different tech clubs, you can go to National Society Black Engineer Room, Shai Hack and I just sponsored a room before, and my idea is, uh, and it was also designed with a focus group of engineers, they were like, I don't want a happy hour, I don't want to talk to random people about little tiny conversations, so every room is a full activity. It's a board game by Out in Tech. National Society of Black Engineers uh, actually puts an escape room with a NASA engineer, I have gotten stuck in it every year, but they like design that. Um, it's just, a, my, my theory is you have this amazing community here and there are other communities and if we could put them all in one crazy day room, hopefully everyone can find like a space to root. And that's, that's kind of what I'm doing and where I'm headed. Again, it's version four. The first one was wild. It was COVID video game style. We designed all these like virtual rooms. It was so fun. But now it's like 200 people here and, and my, my dream is it's bigger. Like my dream is open house Chicago, right? Like every tech office, every cool option you can go and like help out. Every breakout shy hack night room is just a space to explore. Because what's really sobering is everyone here is here with an event. You've met someone at a different company. 
the amount of first-gen tech workers I talk to that have no idea that you're even supposed to go to anything outside of your company is really sobering. So, like, the amount of times I just go, have you been to Shack Hack, like, Shack Hack Night, Shack Hack Night, like, right? But I need all of those. Like, I need that, like, I, I will make my information available. I need all of those tips. Like, hey, I'm a product woman. Hey, I'm a non-binary individual that I want to be in data science. Like, I, I can't do it manually. I, I want to figure out ways to systematize it. But this is where, what I'm passionate about, and um, I'm just excited to be here with all of you. So thank you. Thank you, Al. We'll take some questions, but since I have the mic, I get to do the first question. Great. Um, I was always a little bit uh, fascinated by the Gender Equity and Technology Seed Fund. Um, when you were, what did you learn that you brought with you to World Business Chicago while you know, distributing the $20 million of, of seed funding? Yeah, so it was a really big honor. We were doing so well in Chicago. So this Get Seeds was Chicago, D.C., and Miami, but Chicago was a very, very successful program. And my funders actually gave me some subgranting ability to grow programs. Um, I think the biggest things I learned was when you pilot something, first of all, I had a lot of uh, effectiveness piloting ideas with not so much money, but like say fifteen or $20,000 of seed money. And I'd be like, you can do anything you want with that money in this idea. And people would collaborate. They'd be like, oh, $20,000. Because these are like nonprofit leaders, Adam. They don't have any extra cash to try something right. new. Their board's going to block them, right? So they were coming up with these amazing creative ideas that were already there. And then I think the scaling funding. Um, so I was able to give out a couple million dollars of additional funding. Um, it just made it more serious. Like it made it like everyone was like, oh, no, I'm going to really think. Um, I have this amazing program at 1871 Matter and M Hub. It's called the Investor in Residence Program. Pure, honest feedback from an investor. Sometimes, they're, sometimes they say, oh, I don't know if your company's going to raise money. And people are like, oh, man. But like, that's like something that no one was paid to ever do that. Everyone was like, asked to volunteer their time. But you start to think about like, things that could be a little bit more sustainable. Yeah, definitely things you can bring with you to World Business Chicago. Questions for Al. I wonder when you were going through, like, people don't, the difference between, we've talked about this, San Francisco and Chicago, right? There's this dynamic sometimes. Do you think it's an identity crisis that, like, people don't identify as tech? Like, I know when I taught, so much of, like, having a student learn Software was about being able to identify what it meant to be a software. It's like if you haven't seen it, you can't. Yeah, so I think up. tech identity here is secondary to a primary industry largely. I'm not saying everyone, but you're like, oh, I'm in healthcare, I, but I'm actually a product manager. I think that's one. I think, two, the most successful women and non-binary founders come out of giant tech companies that went through, like, equity, raises, they've lived that like chaos journey and they are the most successful founders hands down. And I think it's about living that like crazy Silicon Valley life that's only catching on now other places, but it's, it, it's an ethos. And I mean, literally, I think if you sold lemonade in the off the front office of Google, you'd be like, I'm a tech worker. And in Chicago, they'd be like, I don't know if I'm a tech, I don't know. But I'm like, you work at Google. Like, I really don't know if I'm a tech worker. I think it's like something that Chicago is still... Pretty new to a bit. What's the seed stage ecosystem like in Chicago? Um, and would you say, like, in your kind of roles that you've been in, how easy is it kind of mobilizing that uh, group towards these founders? I love that. So, again, for everyone's uh, knowledge, an idea stage is like angel, family, and friends. Then you have this crazy nebulous thing that's called seed stage, which can be between 100,000 and 3 million. It's a nonsense number, but it's b before the thing called series. Series is like, wow, they're a really big company. They raised a lot of money. Um, so, seed is really hard in Chicago. It's not that many people. And when you get to diverse founders, it's like you could probably have them in Tech Nexus. Like this, it's not great. Um, and so it's lonely. It's a lonely existence. You're flying to different cities. So one thing I said is like, let's create community. These founders, I take them to a conference together. I swear it's like, bye college kids, have fun. Like I'm like the mom, like bye. Because every, they're, they're lonely, everyone's expecting they're good. They're not good. They're still like using credit cards and freaking out. The other thing I was really passionate about in Chicago, I said, 
I don't care if we're doing economic development in Chicago. We are, I have a women and non-binary travel fund at World Business Chicago. We fly women and non-binary founders to the coast, to Toronto, to Miami. Cause I was like, real estate people fly to China and Canada for money. Founders, if they're not getting it here, they have to, they're going somewhere else by themselves. So let's support them. Chicago is a kind of conservative money town. So they, what they do is they go, I will fund you when you get seed funding. And you're like, how am I going to get seed funding? So what, what I do is like, I'm like, fine. I'm going to send all of these amazing founders to the freaking Bay. I took them to Menlo Park and Redwood City and all that stuff. And then I'm gonna, they're going to raise the money and then they're going to come back and they're going to take your money. And that's like the big thing is I don't, these people don't want to leave Chicago. They love Chicago. But we have to realize like it's like, it's still, I think the biggest thing to add them to your point with business Everyone thinks like once you're hired or you raise that first check, you're all good. But my thing, my passion is like, we are not all good. Like once we're all good, once it's all parody, I will just quit. It's fine. But we're not. And we, and I think that's a narrative that's hard to shake is like, it's still not great. So that's my little storm, more storm cloud. I don't mind them taking money from other cities. I love it when they build their, when they build their, yeah. their business here and they all build all their jobs here and they scale here. Yeah, Alvin. So on the uh, topic of finding tech workers in non-tech ecosystems, what made that switch happen? Because a lot of times that's not intuitive. It's almost counterintuitive, actually. And then from that, where would those people be pointed? How would they be directed to do what this outcome is? Oh, that's a great question. I think it's soberingly. What I think what's happened is tech is now, Grace Hopper is a great definition. There's a tech creation role and then there's a tech utilization role. So there's a lot of tech creation roles, but I would say like at this point, every role is a tech utilization role. So if you have a bank and they have a tech utilization, like a app or, you know, FinTech, they're freaking out and then they hire like a bunch of engineers, but maybe they're not doing, it's not the same as that like multifunctional engineer that did everything anymore. I mean, you're seeing like, very quality assurance engineer. You're, you're seeing jobs that haven't even been on people's radars. So I think that's something that maybe our whole community can think about is like, I think those uh, tech individuals, they're just, they got hired by a bank. They, you know, they work on the app, but but they're, they might, if it's a multinational, they might have like that ERG that's in another city. I, I think for me, that's what I'm most passionate about when I talk to some of these corporate members at World Business is like, you have tech workforce here, even though you're a company you know, yes, yeah, Salesforce, fine, those ones. But the other ones, I'm like, you're, the banks and the hospitals like, are huge on tech workforce. So I think not only goes through leadership, I think we could do a lot more around another project that I've thought about is like, even just a tech role, like I'm gonna have a month on product managers and like product managers from so many different backgrounds. I think a lot of the work could be amplification. Cause you know, like if you're a student and you're like, I got a comp science degree, I should be a back-end debt. Like, no, you could be like 30 roles that you don't know about. So we did a video series my first year where it was like a, a woman that had been in construction and then she got, and I, she, Brittany, and I think she got training and then she went to Microsoft. And like, those are the best stories. Because I also think a big gap in my journey map is pivoters. I had an English major. I'm an, op, um, an opera uh, costume designer and now I'm in tech. Those are the ones also that like, I think are important to reach. But I think we could do more in the media campaign and I think we could do a little bit more of outreach. I've been trying to get into the ERGs and get there, but all help is welcome. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, um, I, well, first of all, I can say that I definitely relate to what you're saying about working in a non-tech sector because I work at Let Us Entertain You and uh, kind of like a similar story, like getting a philosophy degree and doing some traveling and then coming back, learn, learning to code and stuff like that. So it was interesting. I never heard of this discussion before this. Um, but um, I'm also kind of a nerd with urban planning and I was curious if, um, A, you know any cool projects that deserve, that um, like tech projects and urban planning that deserve a little bit more like exposure um, for anything that's going on in Chicago? And I'm sure I'll probably hear a lot more about that tonight. Um, but then also, are there any gaps that you see in terms of projects that could be done for like things to for urban planning in Chicago? In regards to like tech yeah, abilities, tech, and, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, so funny. So Adam and I used to team up at City Tech Collaborative. That was like the height of smart cities, and it was wild. I mean, if you ever just want to hack city environment like tech, it's there's just a lot of needs. I'll give you an example: the Chicago Police Department still uses typewriters. Like, like guys, there's a lot. I mean, if you just want to like 
have a lot, like there's a lot of opportunities, let me just tell you. Um, I think that the battle, I, so I'll go through a couple. I think the battle for uh, loading zone street, like responsiveness, I think that's still chaos, right? Like there's an Uber and then there's a truck and then there's like a bicycle and there's a school drop off. I think there's some of that, op yes, optimization. Um, I think the battle between e-commerce, back e-commerce and brick and mortar retail, I think there's a lot of exploration about like, I really feel like a lot of the small business corridors are light industrial, like, like a florist is making bouquets, but we're not talking about that as like a different engine. So I think there's, there's stuff about leveraging that that's really missing. Um, I also want to say like Adam and I used to be in these meetings and I was like, it's going to be so exciting, these autonomous vehicles. Like, I just love bringing down the lake. But what do you do about the street signage? Where do they park? And they're like, I, I don't know that. That's, that's really... It was typically the one getting over yeah, so you get overexcited and then like we just bring you down to earth. Um, this is a really dumb one, but city to city, like environmental data, building permit data, not standardized. I don't know how I'm going to fix that, but like a trans translational, like really dumb things are, <laughs> really dumb things are out there. Permit systems, obviously, I mean, you guys, you've had projects like that before. So I think those are um, big ones. I think also uh, Al and I participated together in the City Open Workshop, giving community organizations the Pinterest or the ideas of what's possible. Like you have a lot, it's this size. What's everything in the world that you could possibly put on this lot? When you go to a community meeting, they just want to make sure they're asking for something. But if you could arm them with like everything they could ask for, that's amazing. That's a huge urban planning issue. Everyone's like, what do you want? And you're like, what? I want an amusement park. And they're like, noted. And then they don't do it because it's not going to fit on their lot. Um, so I think a lot of the like giving urban planning choices, like getting ahead of it. I think also forecasting, like, hey, there's a, sorry, now I'm on just in my passion areas, but hey, there's like a, you know, it's like heat, it's heated up in Pilsen, it's really expensive. Like what are the, like, where do you get ahead of that? Where do you start, I really feel like the orange line, right? Where do you get ahead and start just like looking at data, looking at housing data, you know, what, what are the ways you can start capacity building some of these organizations that are not in the like, the crazy zone, right? Like they're, they're five years from now. That's the kind of stuff that like the data for that isn't just in like McKinley Park, for example. So I think that's like really cool stuff that I think about. The question from our uh, live stream, uh, are there stats on gender equity in public sector tech jobs versus private sector tech jobs? Does the public sector do better on this? Oh, I like that. That's a great question. Um, so... At this point, I don't think I have a robust answer of that. I think, um, unfortunately, the, the municipal, state, and federal data, um, you know, just isn't, like, super standardized. I can check into that. I'm happy to correspond with that user. Or, but we haven't done any robust work on the federal, state, and local. Um, I will say that it's tough because tech jobs are so undefined or the conversation of like, how do you know it's a tech job or not? It's not the same as a procurement job for like a general contractor or I, you know, like my archetype is always like, everyone knows what a dentist is, but like tech roles is still warring. Um, so, you know, even our stats were from BLS, but we put in the cybersecurity stats from CompTIA because they had them. Um, but I haven't looked into the, the municipal. I would love if they were, they were better. That would be great. Um. Thinking about how segregated of a city Chicago is, um, like so, some of the companies that you listed earlier, such as like um, P33, Tech Nexus, 1871, they're very much localized in downtown Chicago, West Loop, River North area. Um, I'm curious, like, on where have you seen the trickle down effect in communities that are more so underserved, um, where there are people, you know, for example. Um, like Daniel and I this past summer, we went to like a, I, I really, I, I don't know exact name of, I think it was Cicero on the west side of Chicago, but we um, brought like, you know, 10 MetaQuest 3s uh, to teach augmented uh, reality to youth like at the care center on the west side of Chicago. And, um, you know, people were telling us like, oh, we don't have much tech, tech exposure programs here on the west side. And, um, and, and I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, well, you know, I'm in the, I'm in the little circuit. And uh, but a lot of people who I meet in this circuit, they have a high amount of social capital. They know what events to go to, who to talk to in order to increase themselves, their brand, their, their company. But what about those who have a dream and but they don't have the social capital on top of not having the economic capital? Um, 
Do we see like more programs happening in the future that aren't in downtown Chicago to reach those people as well so that they can also fulfill their dreams of like uh, being in uh, having tech and non-tech jobs in different industries as well? No, I think that's a great question. And I think there's always going to be a tension of, um, you know, I think about different community areas and how do you make sure to get engagement across a huge city like Chicago. Um, one of the biggest, um, I don't have as much on the workforce side, but one of the big uh, things I'm proud of is uh, there's a woman named Turan Smith. She runs 37 Oaks. It's an e-commerce training program. So the biggest issue I think is you're like, go be a tech entrepreneur. And you're like in Austin, you're like, I don't even like, I just want to start a business. What are you doing to me? Um, and so we ended up funding. Uh, so I, I felt like I was like meeting the e-commerce Yoda because I'd hear Turan's name everywhere. So like Urban Junction was West Side United. She was like the e-commerce advisor to many chambers of commerce, South Shore Chamber. So one of the scaling grants I did is I actually uh, backed her for two years um, in a partnership. And then I also felt like resource-wise uh, with the Polsky Exchange um, as, a, as a central convener, but we also consulted with South Shore and Urban Junction, et cetera, to do e-commerce training to say, okay, let's not just jump to like, can you be a tech entrepreneur, which is fine. But if you're like, what? But can we get your business on the internet? Can we book reservations? Can we, and so she will actually help you ship and procure from her own warehouse. So for me, that's like a, that's one step. For the, when I think about the workforce side, I'm really honored to always work with a groups like IC Stars or Poor Scholars, which are doing more about, I'm curious about tech, I'm trying this project-based learning. I think that's important too. You can't just go through education. You have to have a portfolio. I actually make sure that like with IC Stars, like they come out with a portfolio and they do, I think, pretty good outreach with partner organizations. I will acknowledge a tension between the downtown and the neighborhoods and there's also, you know, we're in the middle, so like if you're from the west side, you can get here from the south side, but I think there's something more about the nodes and I think our city could do better about, um, frankly, it, sh it, it shouldn't be as confusing when you go to different chambers of commerce. Maybe it's like an overlay. Maybe it's like, or I'm thinking about the businesses, but like, okay, I want to, I want to, use AI in my business. I want to use fractional design work. How, like those kind of lessons, I think we still have a lot of work to do in, in communities. Cause right now it's, it's more like start your business and, and, and then, okay, now you go to 1871. Like that shouldn't be, you know, it should be served. But I think what I'm excited about is it's getting broader. It's more well-known. Um, but I think it's also just making sure people are like, oh, that's something that I can do. Not like, oh, it's fancy. And I think, I think what you brought up was a great point. So, um, on a much wonderful note, um, not only is Noma Shields for Youth Support Science to presenting tomorrow at 5.30 at VRAR Chicago, 1871, but she is also a Tech Rise private invitation for season four. Woo! Yes. Um, so my question to you is, how does it feel to be one of the curators um, to create um, Tech Rise um, and for all creators in tech and uh, just kind of moving forward with the, I call it the P33 boat. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm congratulating. Like, that's amazing. Um, I think that what it is, is it's building like on that momentum, right? Like not just, so it's, it should start there, but it shouldn't end there. It should end when you're a unicorn. It should end when you have 20, lo 20 locations, a global brand. And like, that's what I'm excited to work on with this work is I don't want to just keep it I just don't want to stop it there. But I also want to say, like, can we do more live streaming in different community areas? Can, you know, like, maybe there's Tech Rise for 10-year-olds. I don't know. Like, right? Like, something, where, right, where it just gets a little more, like, of course I'm going to do this. Right? I watched Tech Rise. I went to this AR, VR thing. I'm going to be in game. Like, it's, it's not just STEM, right? It's, like, very focused on, like, opportunities. So, like, that's incredible. Congrats. Yay. I appreciated how there's like this focus on like sort of like K-12 talks about like wraparound services, like after school programming. There's all these things that aren't just, you know, finding the job. Um, I'm curious um, what um, other organizations that are focused on equity, like um, are, are, are there collaborations with folks that are working on racial equity or for folks... Um, with disabilities, are are those organizations out there in Chicago? Are you are you working with them and, and sort of can you give a sense of what it's like working with other people in the space, but sort of from from different um, perspectives? Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the most proud things I did the first month I was in my job is I, they were like, 
okay, it's this women. First it was with women tech. I was like, well, that's not going to work. So it's gender tech. But the biggest thing I knew in Chicago was I pulled up a, like, a fancy census map of like what the city was composed of. And I was like, so for program design, we are going to design to black and Latinx women and non-binary individuals. And so from the very beginning, I'm actually proud of this. Uh, it wasn't supposed to be intersectional, like intentionally, but it was intersectional. So um, even when we do events, so we have so many partnerships um, with different organizations that uh, focus on race and ethnicity. I think I could, I've had calls with Access Living and the MOPD about um, disability access as well, I think that could be expanded. But I think what's important is we don't have public sign-up events. We actually provide invitations to our events to people to come because I think, candidly, what happens when you open the floodgates to a public event, it can be demographically not ideal for like how the event is shaped. So we, we don't, we don't prevent anyone from coming, but you know, some people will get like the small cap invitation. Some people will get like the, you know, you're welcome. So forget exploration, forget exp exploration day. We're very careful about offering, like we'd love for you to come, but we're making sure that it's balanced as well. Because I think sometimes when you have public events, then you have an event and you worked this hard and you don't see people in the room that, you know, represent you. And so I think that's something that um, we've always with Chicago Blend or other groups just making sure that race and ethnicity plays a role. I think other types of uh, diverse backgrounds could play a role, but from the get-go, um, you know, even the Venture Fellows of Chicago, um, you can be BIPOC or you can be women non-binary or both, but it was always seen as kind of an alliance for me. Uh, first of all, uh, awesome talk. I loved how you like broke things down strategically and how to like how you isolate our problems. Uh, there's a couple of global trends that I wanted to ask you about. Um, like, there's you know job prospects for people that are entering the, the tech market have been significantly reducing. Um, so while the percentage of jobs available for women and non-binary people is low, the pie itself is also getting smaller now. Um, diversity programs are being axed. I'm not sure what it is in Chicago, but at least nationally they are being axed. Uh, and then private equity as a whole, uh, they are moving towards more lower risk investments as on average, except for maybe some large language model companies. And then you know you add to the potential like sexism someone feels. Um, I've heard so many horror stories about sexism in, in financial sector jobs here in Chicago, and they're crazy. And then like all the transphobia somebody may experience, and that's a whole crazy thing. Like I don't know what to say, but maybe you could help me. Like what do you tell someone that sees all these barriers and feels a lot of fear and uncertainty? Like what do you tell them as they're entering this market? So not heavy at all. So I'm going to try to go through some of those trends. Um, so one thing is I did a worse job starting than end. If you watch the tech layoffs, so like, hello, I'm a failure because it was like, get all these people hired. And then it was like, everyone got laid off. So that's a problem. Um, I think you're right. I think the pie is shrinking. That I'll address the first one. It was like 2020s, let's get like a thousand people in here. And like very soberingly, women non-binary, BIPOC backgrounds, like lots first to go. So I think that's incredibly problematic. I think there is a, a supply and demand asymmetry that um, I think ethically universities, systems owe a responsibility to. I'm also very, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm also, you know, startups can be a version of work, but like, let's, let's think about this in a measured glance. It's a very volatile industry. One of the things I'm passionate about, and, you know, speaking of the transphobia and the harassment, I think tech has been, I think this is an optics issue. There, there's, a, there's change and advocacy as well. But one issue I see is, I think tech was sold as this like cuddly cute thing where you got like a beer and you were like on a trampoline and it was like awesome, but they were just trying to keep you in their office the whole day. I was like, maybe we just make it Hunger Games. When you go into investment banking, you're like, I'll put my backpack on, I got my supplies, like I'm ready. I, I can't, I am not going to promise to change everything, but I can like, resource up people, be like, here's what to expect. I'm really passionate about exploring, and if anyone has ideas, near peer mentorship, like a whisper network, right? Like, can you get the like, hey, I'm going for the promotion, what do I negotiate? Hey, this is BS, where should I go? I'm not that convinced everyone needs to be promoted directly, right? Like, if I can get you a job at 20 places, maybe everyone treats you better if you could leave. I want to just unleash, like, the network of, of things, right? So if it's not working, you know, I think that, that there's something there about tech has been sold as this like cute thing you go to. No, it's not. So when people go into investment banking or corporate law, they have no illusions of what it's going to be. And tech, you like, have this weird illusion of what it's going to be. And it's like, it could be literally awful. It could be nice too, but awful. Um, so, so I think that is one thing. The other one is I don't want to just say we're just going to, hey, the oppressed, you just got to talk to the oppressed. Like, 
what, what about the oppressors? We ran a program in Miami called Get Champions. It's it's probably more of the carrot than the, we're, we probably candidly play the carrot role more, but like we have to work with the activist groups and advocacy groups as well. But it's also a lot of leaders don't even know what their tech workforce is and how do they think about it and how um, they stay they stay attuned and and complacent. I will say it's it's a rough go right now. Like Fearless Fund, I've heard some terrible things about MEI versus DEI. Like it's a spiral right now. The I think that that's where we are trying to provide language guides, legal guides to our nonprofit partners because and venture capital firms. They're all like scared. They're like trying to draw back, and you're like, wait. You use this language and you stay the course. People may try to sue you, but we're gonna like all defend because it's brutal out there. I mean, I think there was like a gambit that got. It, it's intense. Um, so I don't. Is going to be influenced by the election? Out of curiosity, sorry. To Ooh, but election. Seeing that as a big as a big trend, and what you're describing, I'm curious if you if you think that this is something that that you see. Do you see it reflected in this way, this, this trend against efforts at equity or having to package them in a way that uh, is, is more responsive to domestic politics? Great question, Cameron. I don't know if I'm equipped to answer that whole thing, but what I will say, I'm going to solve all these problems. <laughs> I think there's, there is obviously some things to take in account. I think there was an incredible back. There was an incredible backlash, right? I mean, you saw like the fearless fund and the movement. Even our groups are checking. Certain organizations have even gone out of business. Um, I think the the politics can very much influence that. Absolutely. Um, I think one thing is just there is an upswell of understanding of what's possible and just the needing of support from from community where um, people are still. Finding these, finding these roles, getting higher. I'm not. I'm saying it's a grim picture. And we all. I'm, but it's like I see no reason to give give up. I can see one way it swings. It gets a little, gets worse. One other way, you know. Um, but you know, I think another reckoning is the the tech industry is you know not. Sometimes I'm like maybe I should push people into the non tech industry because this world is like what are you guys doing? So I think that's also a reckoning of like who are the who are the leaders? Are these the leaders? Um, I've gone to some leadership dinners and it's like, are these the leaders that, right? Like, I think this is a tech, like not just politics, but like an existential, this is a big topic, sorry guys, but an existential crisis of like, where have we gone in this space and is that to be celebrated? So that's another thing. Sometimes I'm like, do I want to send people to a tech job? Like, well, I don't know. Um, I was like, maybe I'll just train them all to be badass founders and then they can be the unicorn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's probably where I'm actually right now. So I'm like, I'm, I'm getting cynical. So, okay, I'm gonna train all of you to be founders and then we're going to find non venture capital and there, this is a dream but but there so i don't i just got overwhelmed by my system but it's okay i'll need your help <laughs> he flustered me uh, huh he flustered me oh well it's good that's what he does that's his role um, el ramel from world business chicago thank you so much for thanks guys for that.